Hello, today we're at the Tillamook Air Museum in Tillamook, Oregon. This massive building was one of two airship hangars built here during World War II. The building here is called Hangar B and was one of only two hangars built in 1943 in an astonishing 23 days as part of the U.S. Navy's Tillamook Naval Air Station. While Hangar A was destroyed in a fire in 1992, Hangar B is one of the last remnants of an important chapter in the Allied victory of World War II. The two hangars housed eight K-class airships that provided surveillance along the American Northwest coastline throughout the war. With the attack on Pearl Harbor in the Pacific and the threat of roaming German U-boat wolf packs in the Atlantic, American war planners were faced with a difficult problem. How do you protect 12,000 miles of coastline? The answer they came up with was found in a surprising simple aircraft design, the blimp. The U.S. Navy saw the appeal of airships back as far as World War I, when large, rigid airships like the German Zeppelins gained notoriety for both their range and their capacity. After World War I had ended, the U.S. continued the development of these rigid, heavy airships, along with many Western nations with mixed results. During the 1930s, the Navy lost the airships Aiken, Roma, Shenandoah, and Macon, and with the horrific loss of the German Hindenburg, the age of rigid airships was over. Despite the disasters, the Navy's enthusiasm did not wave, and the era of lighter-than-air aircraft was not over. The U.S. began testing a new airship designed and developed by the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company. Their blimp was a non-rigid airship that relied on pressure from lifting gas, in this case helium, to maintain the strength of the aircraft. And because a blimp's hull is made out of rubber, it is not as vulnerable to fires or structural failures. After the attack on Pearl Harbor, Congress authorized the construction and purchase of 200 of these K-class airships. With congressional funding and approval, the Navy built 10 naval air stations that were part of a large coastal defense network. Their mission was to patrol the U.S. coastline from Maine to Florida, the Gulf Coast, and from California to the Canadian border. These airships would look for German and Japanese submarines, as well as provide airborne surveillance for naval convoys. The Goodyear K-class airships were 252 feet long, 80 feet wide, and filled with 425,000 cubic feet of helium. Each blimp had a control gondola with attached engines that allowed them to reach a speed of 80 miles per hour. They were lightly armed with 50 caliber machine guns and four 350 pound depth charges for the range of over 2,000 miles and the ability to stay aloft for three days. This made the K-class airships well suited for their coastal patrol duty and convoy escort duty that the American war planners were looking for. The K-class airships had an exceptional safety record. Of the 168 built, only one was lost to enemy action. In 1943, a K-class airship went on the offensive in the Straits of Florida. This was an unusual move for a blimp built primarily for observation. The commander of K-74, Lieutenant Nelson Grills, attacked a surfaced German U-boat as it was trying to sink two freighters. In the engagement, the blimp managed to successfully drop depth charges on the U-boat, but the submarine's anti-aircraft guns damaged one engine and punctured several helium cells. In the end, the crew of the K-74 was rescued from the sea and the German U-boat was forced to disengage from its targets. The 10 K-class naval air stations that were built around the coastline of the United States had an exceptional service record. These air wings were responsible for patrolling an area of over 3 million square miles. By the end of the war, they had completed an astonishing 56,000 operational flights, logging over 550,000 flying hours. The 17,000 military personnel that serviced and flew the K-class airships made an immeasurable contribution to the war effort. They not only safeguarded the nation's shoreline, but also provided an all-seeing eye to the multitudes of American ocean-going vessels, convoys, harbors, and waterways. Naval Air Station Tillamook's ZP-33 Squadron had a complement of 8 K-class airships that was responsible for patrolling from Vancouver, B.C. to Northern California, covering nearly 800 miles of Pacific coastline. Squadron ZP-33 served at the post until NAS Tillamook was decommissioned in 1948. Of the two hangars built, only Hangar B remains today. Each of these hangars was over 1,000 feet long, nearly 300 feet wide, 
and 192 feet tall. That's over 15 stories high. Each door is 120 foot tall and weighs over three tons. It has a floor area of seven acres or over six American football fields. Hangar B is credited as the largest single span wooden building in the world. Standing inside this massive building is certainly humbling. There is one picture that perfectly illustrates the size of these buildings. In 1950, while traveling with an air show, stunt pilot Steve Ralston flew an AT-6 Texan through the aircraft hangar. You can see in the photo a variety of aircraft dwarfed by the entrance of the hangar. Naval Air Station Tillamook was turned into a museum in 1994. It provides a glimpse into a nearly forgotten chapter of aviation history. Today you can find one of the few remaining World War II blimp hangars in Tillamook, Oregon. They have a great display of vintage aircraft and exceptional exhibition that cover both war and peacetime history. They're always updating their exhibits and they recently acquired a B-52 cockpit for display. It's located in the Upper Oregon Coast, about an hour and a half from Portland. Definitely worth a visit. Thank you for watching, and if you have any comments on the Tillamook Air Museum or the Naval Air Station Tillamook, please feel free to leave a comment below.